Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an awesome geometry puzzle. A semicircle with radius 4 and a circle with radius r are inscribed in a semicircle with radius 6 and we're supposed to find r, which is the radius of the green circle. Okay, as always, we are going to be making some connections. You know, we always do that, right? Okay, but these connections must be meaningful. So let's go ahead and proceed. I'm going to go ahead and make my first connection here. So I will go ahead and connect the centers here. So that's going to be one of my connections. Obviously, that's not the only one, right? Now, let's see what we get from here. Maybe we're going to go piece by piece. So it doesn't look too confusing. So that's a perpendicular line. What it means, uh, this is R. And the whole thing from this point to that point, we were given that the radius of the big semicircle, the orange one, is 6. Therefore, this is going to be 6 minus r, if you subtract r from it, obviously. And this is also r. And we don't know this length, so let's call that x. Unknown, right? Cool. But we do need, obviously, we can write an equation here, but we do need another one. How do we get that equation? Again, don't forget, this is a general principle. Always, always connect the centers. It's going to give you something. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect these two centers here. And then let's see what we get. Well, I could probably connect these as well. But how do we proceed from there? Well, it well, doesn't matter. We don't know how to proceed. Then we'll just make connections, right? Just keep connecting dots. All right. All right, let's see. So that's another connection. Now, my goal is to find R. So I need to find X, obviously. And this is r, and this is 4, so that length is 4 plus r. Well, if I could drop a perpendicular here, wouldn't that be nice? Because that would give us something useful. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to drop this perpendicular right here, which means that this length is also going to be, which is kind of like the height of this triangle, uh, is going to be 4. Awesome, which is the radius of the smaller semicircle, correct? Okay, great. But we still need more equations. How do we find them? Well, I think one way to proceed could be we could make a connection through these, like the common tangent, but I'm going to be making more meaningful connections here. And let me change the color here so that it kind of looks a little different. So let me go ahead and connect this point to the endpoints of the diameter of the smaller semicircle, like this one. One connection here and another connection here. All right, so I'm going to go like this. Awesome. Okay, how does that help us? Well, now look at this picture. From symmetry, you probably noticed, hopefully you did, right? That this point is the same distance to these points. Correct? Okay, what is that supposed to mean? Well, that means that we do have a right triangle here. What type of right triangle? Well, this one. There we go. That is a right triangle. Well, do we know the lengths? Yep, we do. For example, this one is going to be the blue line, long one. Here is going to be the radius of the larger semicircle, which is 6. So this is 6. Nice. And this is 4. Why? Because uh, this is the radius of the smaller semicircle from here. So I know the hypotenuse and I know one of the legs. So I can find the other leg. And it's Pythagorean theorem, basically. 16 squared minus... What? 16 squared? Where does that come from? Okay, never mind. 6 squared minus 4 squared, and then you have to square root it. Well, 36 minus 16 is 20, so it's going to be the square root of 20, which I can write as 2 root 5. So this little piece here is going to be 2 root 5. From this point to this point. Awesome. How is that going to help us? Well... It's going to help us find this length. Why? Because now we do have another right triangle here, which is nice, isn't it? Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's just write down the equation, okay? We have 4 squared, and we don't know what that's called, right? Let's call that y. Okay, fine. 4 squared plus y squared is equal to 2 root 5 squared, and that will be 16 plus y squared is equal to 20. From here, y squared is equal to 4, which means y is equal to 2. Okay. My goal is not to find y, but finding y will help me. So y equals 2. Nice. 
what else do I know? I need to know x, but I don't know it, right? But I can write an equation regarding x. How am I going to do that? Well, just the Pythagorean theorem in this triangle, right? Here we go. Let's go ahead and write it down. It's going to look like what? x squared plus r squared equals 6 minus r quantity squared. Again, y has nothing to do with this equation, so it's not going to help us much, but we'll figure it out later. So now I can expand this. Uh, obviously, I can subtract r squared as well. So 36 minus 12 r plus r squared minus r squared. Bye-bye. We have this. So now, obviously, I want to work with x. So maybe it, it will make sense if I was able to get x, you know, in terms of r, right? So let's go ahead and square root both sides. And x will be the square root of 36 minus 12 r. All right, awesome. So I was able to find x in terms of r. What, what else do I need? Well, here's what you need to consider. And with these kinds of problems, most of the time that's the case. Consider the trapezoid. You know what trapezoid I'm talking about? Let's choose a different color here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of green because everything is green. But anyways, so we'll use green. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to shade the trapezoid for you. So hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here, right? Okay, this is the tra trapezoid I'm referring to. So what is so special about that trapezoid is that we know all the side lengths pretty much, right? Okay, and that's good because this is a right trapezoid, right? Okay, cool. So this is what I have. I have the R this way, and then I have this length here, which is X plus 2, right? And I know X in terms of R, so that's kind of nice. And then I have this little, uh, what do you call that? A uh, little slanted line here and then another perpendicular. And that slanted line is r plus 4, and this is 4. Beautiful. Now, we just got to work this out. We are done with y, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. We have x in terms of r. That's also good. If I can write another equation here, then I should be good. Okay. How does that work? Let's go ahead and explore. Okay. So I'm going to draw a perpendicular line here so that I want to make this into a rectangle and a right triangle, which is nice. This is also x plus 2. Now, the whole thing was 4. I subtracted r from it, so this piece should be 4 minus r, and this piece should be r. Great. Now, I'm going to deal with this triangle here, which is a right triangle, which is perfect. And that gives me x plus 2 squared plus 4 minus r squared equals r plus 4 squared. Okay, here we can use our identity. Uh, well, our identity was involving, remember, a plus b squared minus a minus b squared is always equal to 4ab. So let's use that. So from here, I'll be getting x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to this minus this, which is 16r. Okay, cool. That's my other equation. Now, I have this equation. I have that equation. Hopefully, I can put these two together and solve for r. Since I'm solving for r, I would like to replace x with something in terms of r, which is going to come basically from my first equation. So I'll be replacing x with then square root of 36 minus 12 r. That's x plus 2. And then I got to square that gigantic expression and it'll, it'll equal 16 r. Nice. So basically what I did was replace the x with this one. Okay. Nice. Now, I do have a single variable, which is easy to solve. Well, maybe, maybe not. Let's see what happens. I'm going to square the expression on the left-hand side. It's going to give me a minus b. I mean, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, I was going to say. So a squared, the first term, plus 2ab. So multiply these and double the product. And then plus 4. And then this is equal to 16r. You know that in these kinds of equations, we always isolate the radical. So let's go ahead and do that. But of course, we can simplify this a little bit. Let's see what I have. Okay, I'm going to add 12r to both sides. That's going to give me 28r. So I have like a 36 plus 4, which is 40. And if I subtract it, it should be minus 40. Great. Now, obviously, we can divide both sides by 4, right? That's kind of nice. Okay, and then it should give me 7r minus 10. Great. What am I going to do at this point? Well, what we're going to do at this point is basically we're going to solve for r. But there, there's going to be two values. We have to decide which one is which. Okay. 
Now, since we have a radical, let's go ahead and square both sides of this, okay? That's our general strategy for solving radical equations. But with radicals, remember, we always have to go back and check our work because some solutions may not be in the domain. So this squared is equal to this squared, which is 49 r squared minus 7 times 10 is 70, double that, r plus 100. Awesome. We're almost done. Uh, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side, 49 r squared. So I'm going to be adding 12 r, so negative 140 plus 12 is negative 128. Nice, okay, negative 128r. So these, this is taken care of, this is taken care of, this is taken care of. Now what I have is 36 subtracted from 100, that's going to be 64. And the whole thing is gonna equal zero. Okay, so this equation has two solutions and they're both positive, so we really need to decide which one is gonna be good for us. But before that, I, I'd like you to take a look at the picture. Because if you look at the picture, given that the radius of the smaller semicircle is 4, we see that the radius of the circle is less than 4, maybe about 2-ish, I would say. Looks like it's about half. Okay, so something in the neighborhood of 2 would be reasonable. If something is too large, we're not going to accept it. Okay, let's go ahead and write down the solutions from here. And that's going to look like r equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Don't worry about the b squared, even though that's a large number. We have common factors and we can take care of this. 2 times 49 is 98. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and simplify this here. What I can do is I do have a 64 here, right? Obviously, uh, 64 can be taken out, but let's go ahead and do this. Do it this way. This is 64 squared times 2 squared, which is 4, and then this has 4 times 49 times 64. So 6 times 40, okay, what am I saying? 64 times 4 is a common factor, Great, Great. Okay, so I can take that out. If I do, then if I square root 64 times 4, then I should be getting 8 times 2, which is 16. So this is going to be a 16, and inside the radical, since I've taken out 64 times 4, I end up with as one single 64 here, minus 49. Awesome. Almost there. Okay, divided by 98. And then let's see what happens at the end. So 64 minus 49 is equal to 15. 15 is not a perfect square, so it's just going to stay like that. But we could simplify this a little bit, you know, because we have a common factor, and that common factor happens to be 2. Therefore, if we divide everything by 2, we're going to be getting 64 plus 8 root 15 over 49. At this point, I'm splitting up the solutions because I have to decide which one is going to be acceptable, right? Okay. We know that both of these are solutions. I mean, they're valid in terms of being positive, but, but the first one, if you call this R1 and this R2, notice that R1 is too large. Why? First of all, if you had to pick between a small and a large value, you would probably go with the smaller one, but let's still check. Okay. So, Square root of 15 is like kind of 4. 4 times 8 is 32. 32 plus 64 is 96. And 96 divided by 49 is close to 2. Wow, that's surprising. So this looks like this looks more like the answer. But again, we need to check. The second one is going to be like, uh, this was 64 plus 32. This is going to be like 64 minus 32. This is like 32 divided by 49. Oh, R2 is going to be less than 1. But notice that that's not acceptable because if you look at our picture, it needs to make sense, right? This was drawn accurately on Desmos, okay? Uh, so the answer needs to be pretty close to 2, okay? All right, so just quick visual inspection tells us that. So we're going to go by the first one, which is kind of surprising for me. But anyways, that's what it is. So our solution is 64 plus 8 root 15 divided by 49, which is the radius of the circle we're looking for. All right. Well, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please comment, like, subscribe, interact, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, be safe, take care of yourself and others, and see you soon. Bye-bye.